You're welcome. We got going so late today that the coffee shops are already open, which I'm not <laughs> so mad about, but we were supposed to be out of town two hours yeah. ago or so. We're in Sofia, Bulgaria, the country's capital. We'll make a video about Sofia later on, but we stayed here just a couple of nights en route to some adventures. We picked up a rental car, as you can see. So we are free and wild. Where That's are we going? Freedom. Yeah, we're heading about two hours south from Sofia to Rila for one of Bulgaria's most famous hikes. It's the Seven Rila Lakes hike, and it is supposed to be incredible with the views and as the name suggests, seven beautiful lakes up in this alpine region with mountain views all around. Let's get driving. And I'm surprised y'all, it is beautiful. Just like 10 minutes outside of Sofia, there are a lot of beautiful rolling hills and mountains and cliffs and a lot of greenery and it is beautiful. Like my ears are already start, starting to pop and we're like 10 minutes outside of the city. Bulgaria is beautiful, y'all. Parking for basically one day is five le, which is only like two dollars and fifty cents USD, and it's cash only. So make sure you have cash when you come here. I believe the chair lifts, which we're going to take to the start of the trailhead up there, um, take credit card as well. So you should be okay for that. We'll let you know in just a second. Is it le or le? We parked. We're walking up to the little chair lift now, y'all, and it is busy. There are cars everywhere. We drove to the end to see if there are any spots, but. There weren't, so I had to back up for like 200 meters in reverse to find a parking spot. So definitely get here early if you want to make sure you have parking close to the chairlift. But even at this time around 11 a.m., it's not too bad. We're arriving to the top now. Two round trip on internet? No. Oh, okay. Do you have cash? I do. Yeah. The internet's not working. Ooh. Tickets secured. It was 25 lev per person, which is about 25 USD total for two. I will say bring cash. We tried to pay with credit card and she said the internet wasn't working, which fair enough, we are kind of out here. So just go ahead and bring cash and you'll be good to go. I see the chairs going, let's catch one. <laughs> Well, I need a free hand. <laughs> Very hard that to film getting on the chairlift with one hand trying to film. That yeah. was quick. They were like, stop. Okay, go. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Put your backpack on first. <laughs> we made it. I love a good chairlift. It feels like we're on a swing set. We're gonna just swing yeah, we, it a little bit. Yeah, we really bit. got some like swinging momentum going. <laughs> up, 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 and away. So we thought that the chairlift closed at 4.30 on their return based on like the Google Maps listing and other online listings, but it's actually 6.30 p.m. So we're in luck because the whole hike, I believe, is gonna take us probably a good five to six hours with it's, filming. Yeah, it's usually three to four. Yeah. We're slow because we film, <laughs> but I think maybe that's like summer hours, you know, the extended hours. That's true. So definitely check before you come, yep. but we are good to go today. Sun is behind a huge cloud and we keep going up and up in elevation and it is cold. My jacket's at the bottom of my backpack so we have to wait till we get off. Luckily we're almost done but it is breezy up here. Woo! <laughs> That's very exciting. Yeah, the assist is a lot. <laughs> Come on. Oh, to be a mountain puppy. I got a toe, I got a one of them. Ooh. <laughs> we are at the trailhead for the Rila Seven Lakes hike, y'all, and it is stunning here. You almost feel like you're in Switzerland or Southern Germany, or maybe like the Dolomites or something. It just has this beautiful alpine mountainous like terrain. It is large patches of ice. It is incredible. <laughs> it is gorgeous. I didn't 
expect it to look like this. Uh, for some reason, I was expecting forest, but we are up in the mountains, mm -hmm. y'all. I have started my all trails map. We're ready to go. It is supposed to be 6.2 miles nice. with almost 1,800 feet of elevation gain. It's going to be a hike. Also, there were toilets at the beginning of the hike at the little hotel yep. restaurant. They were one love per person. Yep. Let's hike. You're going to want to be up on your cardiovascular fitness because, I mean, we're up here. But it's not like a huge elevation difference, but I feel it all. Right at the beginning, it is a serious gut check, just steep incline. But I will say they have a ton of great infrastructure. Everything is well marked, well paved. They've done a really good job of setting this up for everyone. Yeah, for sure they have, but <clears throat> it goes up. <laughs> We've leveled off a tiny bit, which feels really nice. And I spy a lake. Ooh, the first lake. One of seven. You know, on the, uh, the wildflowers here are stunning. They're so vibrant. We oh got like gosh, yellows, yeah. purples, blues, reds, hot pinks. Incredible and butterflies flying by. Oh, that breeze feels good. All right, so we just saw lakes number two and three, and it's really cool. They kind of feed each other with like small waterfalls running off from the top one to the lower one, and they keep just kind of cascading down. As you walk, you can constantly hear waterfalls in the distance. Oof, it is gorgeous, y'all. Beautiful. Light count. That's number four. Mm -hmm. That's rude. That's rude. If you see any trash on the uh, trails, you can pick it up, take it with you. And right at the upper chairlift station, there's a trash collection point where you can drop it off. Lake count is based on view, not what's closest to us. So that could be lake number one or it could be lake number four or five. We don't really know. Either way, this hike is just what we needed. Look at the baby retrieving a frisbee. Lunch with a view. We found a nice little rock next to a gorgeous lake with a doggy in the background. I love it. And let's do a little unboxing. Oh, the dog keeps running near me. Let's do an unboxing of what's for lunch. We have PB&J, classic. We've got some dried figs. We've got lots of granola bars, a couple of apples, some almonds, a little of this, a little of that, whatever sounds good to us, and some water. Let's eat. Okay, we've had a nice long lunch break, let the food kind of settle, and now begins definitely the hardest part we are going up 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 i think we still have a thousand feet of elevation to do this part of it once you get to the the water it's kind of an out and back and then you'll come back to this spot and go back to make the actual loop if that makes sense but oh i think we even have to kind of climb some ice ish i'm a little nervous let's go give it a try <laughs> It's always weird seeing so much snow and ice around you and seeing the ice in the lake, but it's hot and you feel warm up here. <sighs> Makes it that much more enjoyable to see that scenery, but also be fairly comfortable for a pretty strenuous hike. So watch yourself. Here in early summer and all of the ice and snow hasn't quite melted just yet and unfortunately we don't have our hiking boots and any I, of our hiking gear with us. I really miss my boots. You're, <laughs> you're gonna prefer waterproof shoes. We're about to walk through slush in knit sneakers. <laughs> Slippery slush. It's pretty oh, thick man. and we have like no grip on our shoes but we just wanted to come here anyway so before y'all attack us in the comments and you know start yeah. calling us out. We know. We weren't planning to do any hikes like this this segment in Europe. So How could you miss tackle. this? You couldn't. Let's go. Oh, 
All right, that wasn't that bad. Luckily, a lot of people have gone before us and left a bunch of big footprints that we can kind of step in and use as little steps and ledges to get up. So that wasn't too bad, but I have a feeling going down is gonna be a little bit more tricky. Did you expect all this today? I didn't expect all this today. To be honest, I, had, <laughs> I didn't realize it was all alpine. And this is like the most excellent surprise, but coming down on that snow is gonna be kind of funny. We've seen people slide down it. We've seen people like tumble down it. I think that short one later might be the way to go, but that's a problem for later. halfway through our hike but we brought our trusty gray l water purifying water bottle y'all we've been traveling with these things since 2019 when we first started it all when you need some water you just fill this puppy up press it through the filter and voila fresh snow melt water to drink and in this case it is ice cold tastes perfect <laughs> Well, I admire their beauty, but yeah, I hate them. We've made it up to the sixth lake, y'all, and you can tell it gets a lot colder up here. This one looks like it's like 70% iced over. 70% feels high. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give it 30% ice. 30%? Well, it's only on the top. You want to debate? You want to fight? You, yeah. yeah. someone. Three, four, hiding, clear, some, four. No pressure. <laughs> Raining champ. Y'all, I don't know what it is, but Ashley literally always beats me at thumb wrestling. And I actually try. Who is this walking off like she's a champion or something? A little bit longer to go. There we go. Way up there. seven of the lakes and you're on top of here. It feels so amazing, so free with that crisp air coming and hitting you. It's incredible. Just having a contemplative moment. Ooh, we did it, y'all. The views are stunning. Our legs are tired. We're only halfway through our adventure out here near Rila, so we're just gonna go ahead and do the descent. You won't miss much, and we will see y'all bright and early in the morning for a whole new set of adventures. Toodles. Good morning. Oh, it's a kind of a beautiful rainy morning out in the countryside of Bulgaria. We weren't even going to sort of include our overnight stay because we didn't think it would be much at all besides a place to lay our heads, but it turned into such a beautiful travel moment and so we wanted to bring you along it's breakfast time our gracious gracious host peter oh let me back up we are at the guest house argacho and peter is the owner of this guest house it is magnificent out it feels like in the middle of nowhere but it's very much somewhere in bulgaria near um, i think the town of stob s-t-o-b and he's just been the most excellent host we were up so late talking and he was sharing his homemade um liquor what reiki 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 yeah anyway it's made from grapes and it we were just chatting about travel and a little bit of this a little bit of that it was just amazing we highly highly recommend link below you can book it through booking.com that's how we found it we had no idea it was going to be such a like 
homestay kind of a feeling. Anyway, I'm starving. Right, so the rain is really coming down now, but we're covered under a little awning, so it's a beautiful picnic for breakfast. So we've got some sort of Bulgarian pancake filled with chocolate, jam, and honey, one of each, so let's dig in. Mm. In Bulgaria, the people eat with sweet. Yes. Sweet, yeah. Y'all got the fried bread, which is some kind of basically bread with egg wash and milk mixture and fried and toasted. I thought it was like a French toast, but it's not. It's very thick, a little chewy. It just tastes like a fried bread, a little bit like a French toast, but not near as soft. Very simple. All right, y'all, our time here has come to an end. We stayed in the, uh, the village of Staub, which there's only like 700 people that live in this village. It is super quiet. A lot of like vineyards around. Perfect place to wake up, have a breakfast, and then head out to our next stop, which is the Rila Monastery. It's one of the most popular attractions in this area, and it's only like a 30 minute drive from here. Let's get going. Yo, this is ridiculous. We're trying to get to the ATM because everything is cash. We have to pay for the guest house and cash and the monastery and parking. The road we're supposed to go on is under construction and it's muddy because it poured down last night. And I can't really turn around, but I'm trying to get out of here. And there's a car blocking the path back there. You're okay, I think. Oh, stop. Go forward, go forward. Tell me how far. Keep going, keep going. Oh. Um. Uh, in slowly. Okay. Okay. So basically, if you go any further that way, you're gonna hit because it, your back wheel starts to go down, and so you're gonna hit the undercarriage. So you can go mm. back a little bit more. But not much. But not much. This is going to be a ooh, 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 kind of a situation. It's very uh, strange. Okay. Okay. A little more. A hair more. You're good. Keep on. Stop. Where are you in, sweetheart? Wherever you're going. Yikes. To the monastery. Jordan popped into a store that supposedly has an ATM, and I think there's also maybe an ATM across the street. We went more into the actual town of Rila, but now seems like the perfect time to mention, y'all really missed it on the back half of that hike yesterday. We, I, oh, This morning, I woke up feeling guilty that we didn't film it, but it was just impossible. We were on a time crunch because the whole day just took so much longer than we thought with us stopping, filming. We were rushing to make it back to the chairlift, which closed at 6.30. We got off trail for a good long while. So then we realized we're off trail. We double back. And then at the point where we double back and we're supposed to be back on trail, it's just not well marked. We were trying to take the red trail and there's several different ones that are crisscrossing. Jordan's running ahead, trying to see where to go and doubling back. And I'm honestly just trying not to cry because at this point it's the end of a very long day and we are freaking exhausted and honestly a little sunburned. We finally find the red trail again and we're seeing markings. And then next thing you know, we come to a major river crossing, like take your shoes off, get into the water river crossing. Ice. Oh, death. Death. Ah. I'm so sorry we didn't film it. It would have been very exciting content, but it was so stressful in the moment. We're climbing up boulders. We're basically like running through this meadow section and the entire thing is just full of mud. <sighs> There were a couple of times where my thighs just like wouldn't move fast enough anymore. And I'm like trying to pep talk myself of like, you have to do it. You have to do it because if we had missed the chairlift, it was gonna be another hour or two to get back down without the lift. When my butt finally hit the seat of the chairlift at like 6.15, I could have cried with relief. We made it, Jordan was such a champ. Uh, speaking of a champ, he's jogging back to me. I really hope with money in hand. <laughs> I did it. Straight cash, homie. 
Wow. Not too bad. To the mask. Pretty straightforward drive here. There's really just one road that takes you all the way, and as you get closer, there's some signage. The parking lot is kind of small. It was five left per car, but there were plenty of spots open when we got here. So we're gonna make our way inside and see this monastery. Wow, first impressions. It's bigger than we both thought and far more like detailed and intricate. There's a lot to look at. The building itself has a ton going on, but even the apartment looking thing all around it, it has so much beautiful artwork and detail and woodwork up there. It is gorgeous. Also the setting out here couldn't be more perfect for the monastery just down below the mountains and you look up and you just see these beautiful mountain peaks and the greenery with the clouds rolling over the top and you really start to understand why they picked this location. It's incredibly beautiful. This is what you come to see, I think. These paintings are crazy beautiful, super duper detailed, all kinds of what look like biblical stories everywhere. Wanted to mention a few visitor's notes. One entrance to just this part of it is totally free. You pay to park, but you can come in and take all of this in for free. There is a museum you have to pay to enter. There are restrooms here that are also free, which is rare in Europe. They are a little bit basic. Bring your own TP and you're gonna have to do a squatty potty situation. But hey, at least they're free. goes all over the outside of the monastery that the bottom portion of the frescoes appear to be depictions of hell or the underworld. Everything looks very dark, very scary, lots of demons. And then at the very tippy top is where you'll see depictions of Jesus in heaven and angels and all that and kind of in the middle depictions of earth. Very beautiful. inside the monastery itself, but we went in and it is absolutely beautiful. It's also free to enter, so you can enter, kind of quietly walk around and enjoy. I think it's for the best that there's absolutely no filming. You can't even take a picture, no photography at all, because almost everybody, I think except for us, were actively worshiping. You can buy prayer candles and they were doing that, lighting them, going about their prayers. It was a very active religious site, so I think it's for the best that everybody stay respectful. Speaking of which, you also need to cover your shoulders and cover your knees, dress pretty modestly, but otherwise we absolutely recommend it. I don't know if I would go all the way out of my way from Sophia just for this, but while you're here, do the Seven Lakes, do the monastery. Also just down the road is a cave you can visit, which is the cave where the original monk who made this place famous lived for years and years and years. You can visit that. You can visit the Stobe Pyramids, which are in the town of Stobe, which is where we were this morning. It's a really cool rock formation, a little bit of hiking out there. There seems to be a lot of outdoor activity in this area. Obviously it's naturally gorgeous. So plenty to do and make several day trip out of if you wanted to. I got this cute little bakery here. The menu's in Bulgarian, so we can't read it, but we were told by our host at the guest house that we gotta get the makitsa, which is like a fried bread that comes with some jam, and we see some other local people here eating that as well, so that's what we're gonna get. Ooh, they're fresh and hot, y'all. They smell so good. And there were one lev each, and then the jelly as well. We got the strawberry jelly as one lev. Looks like there's some powdered sugar or something over there on top as well. Let's go dig in. They're fluffier and thicker than I thought they were going to be. I think they put yogurt in here, so I'm expecting it to have like a little bit of a tang maybe. All right, first bite with some powdered sugar. Mmm, that's good. It's very soft and doughy on the inside and the exterior has a crisp outside. Mm. I recommend the powdered sugar. Very funnel cake vibes but slightly chewier, I feel. The powdered sugar on that is so good. All right, I think on this sugary note, 
We're gonna round out this video. It was kind of more of an adventure than we bargained for, but I hope y'all enjoyed coming along. We're off to Sofia next. We'll see you in the next one.